instead of sit and waste hours and hours dreaming of building a bike, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bike apart and I'm going to spec it out completely as to what it's what's on it, what how much everything weighs because I'm just a I'm just a a parts geek. I want to know exactly what every part of my bike weighs and where it came from and if I can shave weight, how I can do it, can I build performance, how can I change that. Okay, that's everything peripheral to the bike uh, off. So now what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to attack the wheels. The wheels were stock and one of the one of the seals, the seal on this, the rubber of this front hub is already like um, like leaking a little bit of the grease. So it has like a, it has a rip, yeah, it has a rip in the rubber of the the hub seals. They're WTB, which WTB is a good brand. They're they're called All Mountain 29 Speed Disc. Now I'll have to look it up. These might be decent rims, in which case I might want to just swap out that hub. The front wheel, this is a, a 700C or a 29er wheel. It's actually a 29er wheel, but it's a 700C tire. Now again, they're the same, they're the same diameter, so that measures the diameter of this circle from this this rim edge to this rim edge is the same for a 700 c or a 29er the difference is that the 29ers are usually bigger mountain bike tires these are not quite there these are 700 by 40 c um tires all right now so what's the difference between 700 c and 29 by some number in inches well the 700 by 40 c where does it say it these are Kenda, by the way. These are Kenda Happy Medium tires. I really like them. They're designed to have a relatively good rolling surface for, for pavement, but just enough little bit of a grip for gravel and off-road. Now, they're not a mountain bike tire for sure, but they're nice for uh, commuting-type tires. They came stock on the bike. No problems with these. I had flats in the beginning, but it was flats because there were metal shavings inside of the inside of the rim that I had never vacuumed out or cleaned out, and they were getting punctures from the inside of the inner tube. But... um. The 700 by 40 C, 40 C is the diameter of the tire. So that means 40 is 40 millimeters. Uh, let's look at our tape measure. 40 millimeters is right there, just above one and a half. So basically this would be like a 29 by 1.5 inch tire. All right, so I'm gonna take the air out. I'm gonna remove the tire, mask the tire, mask the tube, mask the wheel set. All right, Kenda Happy Medium, 700 by 40 C. Inner tube removed. 450 grams. That's actually not bad. That's really light. Let me try that again. Yeah, 450 grams. To find the mass of the tube, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the tube back into the tire, and then I'm going to mass the pair and subtract the tire's weight. 590 altogether. Those inner tubes were designed for 700 by 35 to 43C range, so perfect range for this tire, and uh, they are 140 grams. So the tire and the tube was 590 grams, so almost 600 grams for the tire and the tube, um, which I feel like is actually relatively light. I feel like that's not bad at all for a, for a budget stuff. I feel like that's, a, that's not a source of the high weight. Okay, next up is going to be the mass of the front wheel, this... WTB All Mountain 29 Speed Disc. Uh, it does have a Tektro Lira disc rotor on there. I'm going to leave it on, and I'm going to mass this with the skewer because I figure all my wheels sets that I consider, I'm going to try my best to consider the mass of the skewer in there as well. Um, but I do happen to have a spare Tektro, the exact same, the exact same disc rotor because I have another another bike that uses these. So I'm going to mass this, and then I can just do the, the same thing. I can subtract it from the the mass of the total. And I don't really think I know what a, how much a, a brake rotor weighs. I don't think I've ever done this. Wow, that's 103 grams. That's, that's sneaky. I didn't expect that to have that kind of mass. That's interesting. That's good to know. Okay, which leads us to the, the wheel itself. 1315. So this wheel, when you take away the, the rotor wet mask, including the skewer, but including the skewer, this is 1,212 grams for this disc, disc wheel itself. So that's, that's pretty hefty for a front. All right, so I am going to attack the rear wheel as well. I'm going to take off the cassette 
Um, I have a whole vi couple of videos where I've actually taken off cassettes, so I'm not going to show that in any detail today, but I'm going to remove this cassette. It's an 8-speed 11 to 32 cassette. I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to take off the tire and the tube. Should be about the same as the other one because that's the same match. And then I'm going to mask the uh, the rear wheel again, subtracting the weight of the of the the brake the brake rotor to see what the mass of this rear wheel is. For the sake of being thorough, since I have to remove my skewer in order to take off my cassette, uh, I'll just throw this on the on the scale right now just to see just to know what these WTB stock they feel they feel robust. Skewers 60 grams. Uh, Oh, good to know anyway. Got to stay consistent with the budget stuff. My cassette 1132 is the Shimano HG51, uh, which I is like the, um, it might even be like Dior or uh, uh, Olivio kind of range. What's the mass on this? 305, 305 for my cassette. All right, so truth is, now that I know the mass of a Tektro Lira brake rotor, and I know the mass of the matching Kenda tire and tube, same exact product, so I can basically mass this, subtract those things, and get the mass of the wheel without taking the tire and tube off. Now, that may not be the purest way, but I think for the purpose, do I really want to know that badly? You know what? I don't want to have that in my mind that I could be wrong, so... Uh, I take that back. I could do that. Let's do it. Let's let's check. Let's do a little bit of science. Let's let's check. Now, hypothetically, one could do those uh, those mathematical operations, and this would yield the true mass of the wheel. Let's find out if that's true. Okay, this is right at twenty one fifty grams, like twenty one fifty two. I want to say two one five two grams. So I'm going to jot that down. By the way, before I do the operation, if I take the, tw the 2,152 grams that this is right now, I haven't touched it, if I take that and I subtract the 590 grams that I'm uh, expecting the tire and tube to be, then I'm left with 1,562. Now that includes the rotor, which means that, actually I should have subtracted that, so that would be 14, 1,459, 1,459 for this rear wheel with the skewer, 1,459. Let's find out. All right, now we find out if that was worth it. Here is the the stock uh, Kenda Happy Medium, seven hundred by forty, with the stock tube. Should be should be about five ninety. I'm getting six forty eight. So this may be a different tube, a fifty gram heavier tube, basically. Um, I'm getting six forty eight. So let me um, I'm going to see. That's why you do it. I kind of want to know what's making this heavier. I've got to know. I'm this, I'm this close. I've got to know. Why is this 50 grams heavier? It's got to be this tube, right? There can't be that much discrepancy in the machining of the same exact tire for 50 grams, right? There can't be that much. I'm assuming this is a different, a different inner tube. Tire is right about 450, 447. Yeah, it was 450 on their side, so 447, 450. So we'll call they'll call the tires confirmed at 450 grams, which I still think is quite a light tire. Uh, kind of kind of in love with these Kenda Happy Mediums. It's the tube. It's the tube that was different. The tube is this is a. It might be more robust, which might be why it hasn't flatted, um, but it's got. It's got extra mass. So that's something to consider when you're building a bike up. You don't always need light if a little bit of a heavier tube is not going to puncture on you. So my rear tube was like 50 grams heavier. Who would have thought? So now I know, mathematically, if I take the mass that I had taken of this rear wheel with the tire and tube included, and I subtract the tire and tube, that gives me uh, 14, and the, and the disc rotor, that gives me a mass of 1401. 1401 grams, so I'm expecting this to be about 1400 grams. Uh, actually, I'm expecting this to be about 1504 because I have the rotor on here. So this is 1437, which means that this 
without the rotor, which I'm, I'm not considering, is, is 1334, so 1330 grams. Still heavy, uh, but there was some discrepancy. Well, somewhere along the way, I lost 70 grams. Now, that also, could there have been 70 grams of air? I mean, I know air has mass, but I'm not enough of a physicist to know if there's 70 grams of air in a, in a tire. I, somehow I doubt it, but certainly I'm missing 70 grams uh, somewhere. Now, there's there's plenty of room for it. This is not the highest quality experimental measuring setup, but at least I'm using the same device. Um, but anyway, there could have been some error there. So I lost 70 grams somewhere along the way. If I add up the front wheel without the rotor and the back wheel without the rotor but with the, the free hub on it, that is 2.5 kilograms. It's, 20, it's 2,546 grams. It's 1212 in the front, 1334 in the back. I still feel like, I still feel like something went slightly wrong. So these are chunky. These are bruisers. Uh, they probably will never fail, but they're definitely bruisers. 